Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take a guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Today we're going to be talking about alcohol washes. What they are, what they entail, and why you need to stop doing them immediately, and what you should be doing instead. So, stick around. All right, so today we're talking about alcohol washes. First off, what are they? Well, an alcohol wash uses a special kind of cup that helps you determine how many mites you have per 100 bees. And depending on what that mite count is, tells you what your mite load is. In other words, are you overly infested or are the mites at a manageable level? And so second, what an alcohol wash entails is getting that special cup and taking approximately 300 bees from a single colony, preferably from the brood nest, which is where you're gonna have a higher mite count, you submerge these bees into your special cup and it has alcohol in it. And it kills the bees in the process, but the mites come off and you're able to eventually pour the bees out and it filters the bees from those mites and you're able to get a mite count per approximate 100 bees. Two varroa mite are considered too many per 100 bees. So in other words, if you did a, an alcohol wash and you had six mites per those 300 bees that you got in that special cup, then you have a heavy mite load. Because if you have, say, 60,000 bees in your hive during summer, that's quite a few mites. That's what an alcohol wash is and what it entails. Now here's why you should stop doing them. First off, in my personal opinion, we only do them because when we become beekeepers, we see the things that other beekeepers are doing, we see things in other YouTube videos, and we think, oh, I should be doing that. And alcohol washes are a really popular thing to do because it makes you feel like you're involved. You're able to count the mites. So let's look at some scenarios. Let's say you see heavy mite loads in your alcohol wash as a result of, of doing that test. Well now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna start treating for varroa mite. But first off, my question is, why weren't you doing so to begin with? As beekeepers, we need to already have a pest and disease management system in place. So the second scenario, let's say you had a very low mite count, or you were like really lucky, and your alcohol wash showed you had zero mites per those 300 bees. Are you gonna stop treating for mites now that your one colony is mite free? Unless you live on an island and can control your colonies to that extent, you are always going to have varroa mite. One of the keys to successful beekeeping is knowing and assuming that you always have a varroa mite present in your beehives and implementing a plan on a regular schedule accordingly. The only thing that an alcohol wash does is show you that you have mites. Well, we already know we have mites in our hives. It also kills 300 bees. Well, congratulations, the mites do that too, and now you become a part of it. And I'm pretty sure that you are not the type that just wants to blatantly kill your bees. Beekeepers are a special group of people. We care. We have bees because we want to be more involved with something special, something sacred, and something that helps provide for the environment, the community, and our, and our own souls as well. It feels good to have bees and to do it in a sustainable, biodynamic way. So I really feel that an alcohol wash is not only unnecessary if you have a pest and disease management plan already in place, treat your bees with whatever method you choose, whether it's apivar strips, hop guard, oxalic acid vaporizers, but do it on a regular schedule. Our goal is not to alcohol wash our bees and see how many mites we have. Our goal is to keep varroa mite at a manageable level so that our hives can thrive as much as they possibly can. Now something to keep in mind and a reason for always having some kind of pest and disease preventative management system in your beekeeping operation is even if you get your own hives down to a manageable level of varroa mite count, like I said earlier, unless you live on an island and you have complete control over every hive on that island, you're always going to have exposure to mites. And I give you an example of what I mean. Where I am right here, this particular location, 
there are other beekeepers within flight radius of my hives. And there's probably some beekeepers I'm not aware of that are in my flight radius. And their pest and disease management may be really crappy. They may not even have a system involved. But eventually, if they have a weak hive, my bees are going to go and rob from that hive. And in the process, they will be exposed to varroa mites. And no matter what my system looks like, how good it is, they're gonna bring mites home. So that's why I need to treat on a regular basis and why another reason I think it's pointless to do alcohol washes to see if you have varroa mite and implement a system accordingly to keep that at a manageable level. Until you hear in the news that there's a cure for varroa mite, assume that you have them. Stop doing your alcohol washes and just treat your bees on that regular schedule. I've used several methods. I'm not a big fan of the chemical strips to put in my hives. I have seen varroa mite run from them. They were deterred by those, but it didn't kill them. In fact, the instructions say you need to remove those strips after 50 something days, otherwise the varroa mite will adapt. Well, I don't want my mites to adapt. I want them to die. So I use an oxalic acid vaporizer. It kills all the mites in a hive, unless they're phoretic mites. And phoretic means that those are the mites inside of capped brood cells. And because those phoretic mites are safe, I have to use my oxalic acid vaporizer every so many days until those capped brood cells are uncapped and those phoretic mites are now exposed to the oxalic acid vapors. Whenever I do a vaporization of oxalic acid for treating for mites, I check at the end of my hives. In other words, once I've started from the beginning over here and I get to the very end and I'm done, I'll go back to the first hive and pull out that slider board and I will see tons of mites on that board. If I wait two more days, I will see even more dead varroa mites on that board, but zero dead bees like you have in an alcohol wash. So I do this in the spring before my honey flow, and I do it in the summer after harvesting the summer harvest, which is when mites are at their highest. So when you do this on a regular schedule, you're gonna keep those mites at a manageable level. Remember, that's our goal as beekeepers until the beekeeping industry tells us Congratulations, we have a cure for Varroa mite. That being said, this is a potentially controversial topic. Let me know what you think and what you do in the comments below. Whatever you do is cool. Remember, your beekeeping operation is yours to do with the way you want. That's what's beautiful about beekeeping. But until then, I highly recommend you cut out those Varroa mite alcohol wash tests and just assume that you always have mites and implement a plan accordingly to kick the mites in the butt. Don't forget to drop me one of these, let your friends know about the Hive Doctor, and I'll see you in the next video.